If you think that organized crime is now a fictional story visible only in mafia movies and shows, you couldn't be more wrong. You would be surprised to learn how many mafia families are still active and thriving with their illegal businesses and gang wars. Are you curious how these mafia families are still functioning today? In today's video, we will go on a journey through the hidden realms of organized crime, revealing the top 10 mafias that are still active today. While the government works hard to eliminate crime, many crime syndicates continue to operate without issue. Despite their diminished influence, these enigmatic criminal enterprises continue to operate in the shadows, refusing to fade into history. Kicking off our countdown with the Dixie Mafia, Mike Gillich Jr., a self-made entrepreneur of Croatian descent, is the head of the Dixie Mafia. He ran motels, nightclubs doubling as strip joints, and even a bingo parlor. More than a businessman, he was the Dixie Mafia's go-to guy. Their postmaster and banker, Gillich also played guardian to Kirksey McCord Nix Jr., a notorious Dixie Mafia member. Nix's escapades included getting caught with illegal weapons and a tangled affair with Juanda Jones's daughter, Sherry Lara, linking him to the murders of Vince and Margaret Sherry. Based in the shady city of Biloxi, Mississippi, these gangsters and kingpins rocked the southern United States in the 60s, thumbing their noses at the corrupt justice system. Starting with illegal gambling joints along the Biloxi Strip, the Dixie Mafia quickly expanded their reach from Texas to Florida. Sheriff Leroy Hobbs of Harrison County became their inside man, releasing prisoners, safeguarding drug shipments, and hiding fugitives. The corruption ran so deep that the whole sheriff's office was labeled a criminal enterprise. The Dixie Mafia didn't stop there. They wanted a monopoly. Using bribery, extortion, and even murder, they became infamous for contract killings, especially against former members. The Sherry murders marked a dark turn. Kirksey Nix, serving a life sentence, wanted out. So his lawyer, Pete Halat, pointed fingers at his former law partner, Judge Vincent Sherry. The judge and his wife were found dead in an ambush execution that screamed mob hit. Citizens demanded better law enforcement, and the FBI stepped in. Leroy Hobbs got 20 years, Halat got 18, and the hitmen and Kirksey McCord Nix got life. Did the Dixie Mafia crumble entirely? Not quite. Cutting off the heads, Gillich and Nix dented their local influence, but rumors suggest they still lurk in the shadows. The heyday might be over, but the echoes of their exploits still linger along the Gulf Coast. Transitioning to the next mafia, as our journey takes us across the Atlantic to the United Kingdom, where the Adams family, officially known as the Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate, forged its criminal empire in the 1980s. The mob was headed by Terry Adams, born October 18, 1954, in London. Alongside his brother Tommy and buddy Patsy, he co-founded the notorious Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate. Growing up in Islington with eight siblings, their Irish roots ran deep. Terry appeared to have retired by 1990, directing criminal activity from the shadows. Described as one of the country's most feared organized criminals, he kept a safe distance from the crimes he profited from, a skill showcased in a 2007 Old Bailey hearing. Terry's crimes were diverse, drug trafficking, extortion, hijacking, gold bullion shipments, and 25 gangland murders. Despite his adeptness at hiding criminal ties, detectives found 500,000 pound worth of art and antiques in his house in 2003, leading to a seven-year jail sentence for money laundering. Financial troubles piled up. A 4.8 million pound legal fees bill in 2007 £650,000 under the proceeds of Crime Act in 2014, and another £700,000 demand in 2017. In 2019, Terry, once a feared figure, was living in a housing association flat with his wife after paying back £50,000 to the Westminster Magistrates Court. Although his organization faced a downturn in the 90s and 2000s with key figures imprisoned, rumors persist of their involvement in a spectrum of criminal activities including drug trafficking and high-scale robberies. Next up, we have the formidable Russian Mafia and its head, Semyon Yudkovich Mogilevich, a man accused of everything from trafficking heroin to selling nuclear weapons and who still roams free. Since the 1990s, he's been a colossal figure in the international criminal underworld, leading the ruthless Red Mafia of Russia. Born on June 30th or July 6, 1946 in Kiev, Ukrainian Soviet Union, Mogilevich grew up in the Padal neighborhood with Jewish parents. His criminal journey began in the 1980s, scamming Russian Jews seeking to emigrate. 
Promising to buy their assets, he pocketed the money, leading to two prison terms. As the Soviet Union crumbled, Mogilevich seized the opportunity, becoming a key player in the rise of the organized crime group, the Red Mafia. His financial acumen and money laundering skills set him apart, making him a crucial player for the Solntsevskaya Bratva, a Russian crime syndicate. Operating through a company named Arbot International in a tax haven, he laundered money for the mob. Mogilevich's criminal empire expanded to include owning gas companies, having alleged links to Donald Trump and ties to Vladimir Putin. Despite being on the FBI's most wanted list, he lived freely in Russia. In the late 1980s, Mogilevich's strategic feeding of information to Hungarian police and Germany's Federal Intelligence Service made him appear cooperative. His ties with Russian crime groups and the Italian Camorra grew, running his organization akin to the American Mafia. His criminal portfolio included defrauding Canadian investors of $150 million, purchasing a bankrupt airline for heroin trafficking, and allegedly dealing in nuclear arms. The FBI took notice, but Mogilevich continued his operations. He was even accused of tax evasion in 2009 under the alias Sergei Schneider. Mogilevich's ties to Putin and Trump extended to the energy sector, where he secured interests in natural gas pipelines. Caught in 2008 on tax evasion charges, he posted bail in 2009, landing on the FBI's most wanted list with a $100,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. With no extradition treaty between Russia and the US, Mogilevich lives freely under Putin's protection. While denying all charges, he resides in Moscow, maintaining close ties with the Sonsevskaya group and former Russian and Ukrainian politicians. The brainy Don continues to elude justice, leaving a trail of mystery and criminal prowess in his wake. Meet Daniel Joseph Kinahan, born on June 25, 1977, an Irish boxing promoter and allegedly the head of the Kinahan Organized Crime Group, also known as the Kinahan Cartel. He orchestrates the smuggling of drugs and firearms across Ireland, the UK, and mainland Europe, extending his influence to criminal activities worldwide. The Kinahan Cartel has a long-standing feud with the Hutch Gang. The conflict ignited in 2015 when the Kinahan Gang murdered Gary Hutch in Marbella, Spain. The feud has claimed at least 18 lives as of August 2021. In a shocking revelation in October 2022, the head of the Irish Police Drugs and Organized Crime Bureau stated that Kinahan had sanctioned a number of murders in the ongoing Hutch Kinahan feud. In 2010, a joint operation involving Spanish, Irish, and British authorities led to Kinahan's arrest in Spain. The Regency Hotel shooting in Dublin in 2016 targeted him, resulting in three casualties, including the death of his associate David Byrne. Kinahan has survived at least one more assassination attempt. Notably, he is banned from entering the United States, labeled a narco-terrorist by the FBI and Drug Enforcement Administration. The Kinahan cartel, including his father and brother, faces the same restriction. Despite legal battles, Kinahan's influence in the boxing world remains significant. In 2012, he co-founded MTK Global, a boxing management company, attracting renowned fighters like Tyson Fury. The Irish government expressed outrage over his involvement in brokering boxing agreements, leading to Kinahan being named in the Irish Parliament. A BBC Panorama documentary delved into Kinahan's role in boxing exploring allegations of criminal ties and intimidation within the sport. However, Kinahan continues to deny these allegations, emphasizing his commitment to boxing. His personal life, including his marriage to Kaomi Robinson, unfolds against the lavish backdrop of Dubai. As investigations into his activities continue, Daniel Kinahan remains a divisive figure at the intersection of boxing, organized crime, and international sanctions. Lastly, we have Dawood Ibrahim, a name synonymous with the dark underbelly of the Indian underworld. Born to a police constable, he started his journey in the crime world alongside the notorious Karim Lala in Mumbai. However, Dawood's ambition soared, and by the 80s and 90s, he had crafted a multi-billion dollar illegal empire. His empire wasn't built on noble pursuits. Instead, it thrived on activities like prostitution, gambling, and drug trafficking. Despite relocating to Dubai in 1986 to dodge the law, Dawood remained a looming presence in Mumbai's criminal landscape. His reach extended beyond borders, orchestrating a significant drug smuggling operation, funneling narcotics into the UK and Western Europe. D Company, 
the crime syndicate he headed, became a name that sent shivers down the spines of many. In 1993, the Indian government accused him of masterminding the devastating Mumbai attacks. Coordinating 12 bomb explosions across the city, the attacks claimed 257 lives and left over 700 injured. In 2003, the U.S. labeled him a global terrorist, barring any financial dealings with him. Reports surfaced of his involvement in smuggling routes shared with Al-Qaeda, linking him to international terrorism. Dawood Ibrahim was also suspected in the 2008 Mumbai attacks that resulted in the deaths of over 170 people. Despite numerous attempts to find him, Dawood remained elusive. Despite reports that he sought refuge in Pakistan, the country has categorically denied harboring this criminal mastermind. The names of these powerful mafia heads are enough to send shivers down any person. Let us know about the names of the mafia heads that we missed. We will be back again with another exciting video soon.